Hey friends, what is up? It's C, the Earthborn Primalist, and I want to talk to you about the seven keys of self-mastery. What does that even mean? So for much of my life, I felt like leaves on the wind. And what I mean by that is I felt like there was all of these external invisible forces all around me that were pushing me in this direction and that and buffeting me all over the place and I had no control over what happened. I just had to be reactive, constantly trying to adjust as it came through. I'm not sure if you can relate to that or not, but that's something that I was always feeling. And so I constantly felt afraid. I was afraid of everything. I was scared of everything in my life. And I masked that fear with some toxic masculinity bullshit. You know, I was putting on these facades, false fronts, just constantly stepping up and rah, being brave and putting myself in crazy, stupid situations just to try and prove that I wasn't what I actually felt on the inside. And I started to think, there has to be a better way. Like, I, I can't continue to bullshit my way through life. I know some people do, their whole way through. But for me, I needed something deeper than that. I needed something more within myself. Life didn't make sense. And so I was left wondering, what do I do about that? Well, so I took a journey. I took a journey of self-discovery. I, you know, I was used to, like most people, walking the length of my life. I was head down, walking this narrow line across my, or through my life, trying to just get through it. And I realized that this, this trail that I was walking on, that is my life, was just one small part of a much wider, deeper story. So I started exploring the width and the depth of myself and my life. And what I came to was there's seven keys that we all possess. It's part of being human. And those seven keys, they enable us to start stepping towards self-mastery. So we stop becoming so much like leaves on the wind and we start becoming more anchored and grounded in the reality of who and what we are. And that's what I discovered with this. What I'm referring to is the primal return. Now the primal return is literally the map of these seven keys and how to move through them. And as you start mastering them on all levels, like because realistically you are a multi-body being, you have a physical body, you have a mental body, you have an emotional body, you have layers of energetic bodies. And those bodies, when they all work together and you are able to ground yourself into every given moment, regardless of how windy it is all around you, all the leaves are kicking up everywhere, you're not one of them anymore. You're able to just stand firmly anchored in your place and you move when you choose to move, not because something else has forced you to move. That's what we're talking about here. So the seven keys, the first one is the easiest to work with, but it's also the one we say, we, we generally tend to have the least control over in modern day life, and that's food. The fact of the matter is, at this point, many people roll their eyes, lose interest, start yawning, walk away, food, whatever, I know how to, food. It's food. I just eat and that's that. But if you cannot control yourself around food and food habits, even if you eat healthy, I'm going to almost guarantee that you have something within your food and eating routine that controls you. It may be coffee in the morning. It doesn't matter what it is. There is something for almost all of us that is in control of us when it comes to food. We're not making the choice. The choice is being made for us. Now, the choice is being made because of cravings. The choice is being made because of emotional eating habits. The choice is being made for us. And it might just be one small thing that needs to be cleaned up. Most of us, on the other hand, have far more work to do. It's not just one small thing. Our food habits do not serve us in the slightest. Now, that's the densest part of us, our physical body. So if you're not honoring that physical body by keeping those food habits as aligned as you can with your truth, then what happens? It's like a house that falls into disrepair. It's like a house that starts crumbling all around you. You go into the house and the doors are kind of off its hinges and there's raccoons breeding in the corner and there's a stained rug on the floor and the, the plaster's chipped and falling off the walls and there's wiring hanging out of the ceilings and you know that's what the house ends up looking like it's all overgrown in the yard around it and 
you know, like nature's reclaiming it. That's what happens to us. It's a perfect analogy. Now you're trying to invite these higher energies into your life. You want to invite abundance into your life. You want to invite healthy relationships into your life. You want to invite a thriving business into your life. These things pull up out the front and they take one look at this house and they're like, oh, fuck no, I'm not going anywhere near that. And they drive off. They'll keep, they'll keep coming around. They'll come back the next day and they're like, it still looks the same. I can't go in there. And they'll take off. You start controlling what you do in terms of your physical body. You start increasing your physical vibration. And it begins with how you interact with the food that you eat. Right? That's just a fact. So you start cleaning that up. You start tidying those practices. And all of a sudden, it's like you've brought in a heavy cleaning crew. Sort working with food does. You, you bring in this heavy duty cleaning crew. You bring in a construction team. You rehang the door. You clear out the yard. Now it's not all overgrown. You do some landscaping. You bring in a landscaping team. You come inside, you rehang plaster on the walls, you put the wiring back into the ceiling and you finish the ceiling, you paint everything, you get the stained rug and you shoo the critters out. Now all of a sudden, you've got a house that may be worthy of inviting guests over to. So the next day when abundance comes past in its car, the next day when this winning relationship that you want comes by in its car, when this awesome business comes by in its car, what happens? Now it pulls up and stops and says, okay, I'm going to go knock on this door. It creates this environment. So that's the first one. That's the first layer for us is food. If you can't control yourself with food, if working with food, if focusing on food and the way that you choose to eat, if that is just too boring, it's not mystical enough, it's too much effort, whatever the excuse is, if you can't, if you can't do it with food, forget about the next six keys. You're not gonna you're not gonna obtain self mastery unless you can master yourself when it comes to food. Plain and simple. But if you do step in and master yourself when it comes to food, the next key is where it gets really fun. I mean it does with food as well. When you start really working with food, when you start working with live, growing, wholesome foods. Things get really fun. I've got this awesome big broth on the stove right now. I got up this morning, cut up all the vegetables, super present when I was doing it, humming a little tune, putting it into the water, putting my bone broth into the water, making a really nice, healing, nurturing, nutritious broth that's going to last me for the week. I can't wait to eat it. It's exciting for me. What am I going to have for dinner tonight? Oh my God, I'm going to have my broth that I've made. That's exciting for me. If you're not at that point, we got some work to do. So that next key is breath. This is where it gets really exciting. Your breath is not just a process of chemical respiration to keep you physically alive. It's not. That is what it does. What it is, is so much more than that. Your breath is literally the gateway to your entire deeper, wider self. You know, I was saying you have this narrow path you're walking through life, you're breathing 25 to 30,000 times every single day and you're probably not showing up for a single one of them unless you've run up a flight of stairs and you're puffed and you're aware of the fact that you can't get enough air in. That's maybe when you notice your breath. Outside of that, you're not even noticing it. It's happening all the time. Bang, bang, bang. You're constantly breathing. You're not showing up for it. And the, the, the biggest thing, there's three steps to what I call foundational breathing that most people aren't even paying attention to. Those three steps to foundational breathing. Now, this is just healthy, regular, everyday breathing. There's three things that you have to do for that foundation breath. And if you're not doing it, there is zero point in doing any other breathwork techniques. You can sit down and do your pranayama with your yoga, you can do anapana with your vipassana meditation, you can do any form of breath work you want. If you don't have these three things in place in your every day, every single minute, every single second of your life while, while you're breathing, there's no point in doing anything else because you do this other breath work, you go and do your pranayama breath work and then you come back and you fall back into your old breathing habits. The window sills are getting dusty 
Like you've got the house, the house is in nice repair now, but the window sills are just getting dusty, the dust is building up. So this is the point where you need to start really implementing a slightly different way of breathing. And it's like bringing a cleaner in every single day. It cleans it out. All the dust is gone from the window sills. You vacuum the, the fluff off the floor. All of that's taken care of. At that point, then we can start playing with the breath. We can start having a lot of fun with it. You know, we can start using it to change the way our body operates. We can start altering which nervous system, sympathetic or parasympathetic, we're operating from in any given moment. We have control over that. If you have something inside your body that isn't working the way that you want it to, like you start to feel yourself get a little bit scratchy in your throat. Okay, cool. I'm going to activate my sympathetic nervous system. I'm going to attack this, whatever this invading pathogen is that's making me feel unwell right now. Or your body is running out of control because there is pollen in the air everywhere right now. I mean, maybe there's not. It's fall. But fall here in Florida is the same as spring. The trees don't know any different, so they start releasing pollen. Maybe there's pollen everywhere. Maybe you're sneezing. Your body is creating that histamine response. So instead of reaching for pharmaceutical antihistamines, you can control that by activating your parasympathetic nervous system. You have that control with your breath. You absolutely do. It's very powerful. What's the next key? The next one is about conditioning ourselves. We condition ourselves to be a part of the elemental forces that are all around us. Right? Instead of hiding away from them, hiding away from nature, hiding away from the elements, we recognize they're already inside of us. We can't hide from them because they're in us. We're comprised of them. We are a composition of elemental forces. So those elemental forces, instead of hiding from them, running away from them, trying to stay in our climate control because it's too hot, it's too cold, it's too windy, it's too whatever, we condition ourselves. Your body is designed to work that way. It starts to adapt. It starts to change. It starts to become more powerful because you are honoring those elemental forces both within and reflected without. Next key, key number four, is movement. Most people in this modern day life do not have lives that are focused in movement. It's very sedentary. Sitting at a desk all day, come home, sit on the couch all afternoon or all evening, watching a Netflix, and then going and lying down in bed, waking up, moving about as you get ready, going and sitting down. You sit in your car in traffic, you sit in your office all day, you come home, you sit in your car on your way home, you then sit on you're sitting down constantly. Like, we need movement. The human body, it's made to move. And without that movement, it gets stuck. It gets sick. It gets diseased. Energy gets stuck. Fascia starts to form memory. The fascia is that awesome connective goo that joins everything to everything else inside your body. If you don't move it, that fascia gets a memory. It's like memory foam. It gets stuck and it starts to create soreness. It has a lot of nerve endings in it. Your sore back is probably not muscular. If you haven't damaged it, but it's just sore from sitting all the time, it's probably the fascia and that can be fixed very easily. Process, shaking it out, moving, moving in a very primal way. So what's the next key? Silence. Most of us are so busy, we're so hectic. We can't stand silence. When things get quiet, what do we do? We feel overwhelmed. We want noise. We want movement. We want activity. But we need to have moments where we fall into that silence and allow ourselves to just be held by it. That is so paramount to our greater health, wellness, and vitality, is being able to honor ourselves in that space of silence and stillness, accustoming ourselves to that. So then the next key, it's about change. How many of you are so disrupted when there's change in your life? Change is a dynamic flow. Like as the river flows and it encounters an obstacle, it doesn't just stop like most of us would. 
it flows, it moves, it goes over and under and around, it changes direction. And it does so beautifully. You watch the waves that, uh, you know, occur on a river as the river moves around the rocks, changing direction as it needs to. And then if the river gets blocked off, it'll break its bank and go form a new leg. The water will always find a way to flow, but it only can do that off the back of being accepting of change. It's dynamic. And then what's the final key? Key number seven. Key number seven is commitment to the path and commitment to yourself. So it permeates across all of the keys. You could show up and half-ass any, any part of this and you'll gain some benefit from it. But if you show up in true commitment to yourself and to your path with these full seven keys, guess what starts to happen? You start to change. You start to become stronger more powerful you start to evolve you start to become fierce in your life you know maybe you're already fit you embrace these seven keys you go from being fit to fierce you make yourself you know on a physical level your body becomes savage like I'm, I'm in my mid 40s now and I'm still able to run ultra marathon barefoot that's ultra marathon is any distance greater than a marathon, greater than 26 miles or 42 kilometers. I can run further than that completely barefoot on any terrain. It doesn't matter. I could do it on the street, on the sidewalk. I can do it in the forest. I could do it on the beach. It doesn't matter because I honor these seven keys, these principles in my life. And it keeps my body savage. It keeps me fierce. It keeps me in a position where I'm in control of me. So now, instead of being these leaves on the wind, guess what? I am anchored and I move when I choose to move. That's what I want to give to you. Is that something that you're ready for in your life? Do you want that? Are you tired of being buffeted by all these forces? Because they, they're getting more and more. There's more intensive forces constantly buffeting us all around, all around the place. Now's the, now's the time we make a stand, we make a claim for ourselves. What are you claiming within your life? It's a powerful question to ask, my friends. Have a beautiful day.